Welcome back to another video, and today I want to challenge your mind. That's right, I want to challenge your understanding, your perception, your paradigm, your understanding about anal fissures, okay? I said a heck of a lot there, but really, the stuff that you know now is what's out there on the internet, right? And doctors and surgeons alike practice pretty much the same thing. But I'm telling you what I have been learning in my office, the research here that I'm doing, and in my personal life, because I struggle with fissures, and that is what leads me to this video, and I want you to think about fissures differently. Let's get to it. Hi there, I'm Dr. Albert Chung, and I'm your friendly proctologist. Thank you so much for being here. I'm a board-certified colon and rectal surgeon in the United States. I'm in California. Give my office a call. Look me up if you're in the area, if you ever want to have a consultation with me in person. If you want a consultation long distance, feel free to email me below to get all the details and we can arrange it online. So today I want to talk to you about anal fissures. And you know, when I think about what's the main statement that I want you to remember from this video, what's the main takeaway? It is this, okay? Anal fissures are a symptom. Huge, right? Many people would think anal fissures is the disease. No, or anal fissures is the source of the problem. I mean, the cut, right? That's, that's the whole thing here. And I'll tell you, no, it's actually not it. There is something else that's underneath this anal fissure problem that's causing all of your issues. So remember this. Because really, what is an anal fissure? Let's define that. An anal fissure is simply a cut in the lining of your anus. And that could be from whatever source of trauma. Ripping from a big poop, ripping from a very lumpy or hard poop, ripping from a loose or diarrhea poop, ripping from overuse of your anus, okay? Just pooping five times a day. You know how raw you can get? And yes, bleeding and fissures can be very much a part of that. And while we're expanding our knowledge on anal fissures, we can't miss an opportunity to talk about solutions for anal fissures, right? And that's what Revival XR is all about. Because when you need to reduce the inflammation with natural ingredients, anti-inflammatory ingredients, this is it right here. Because it is comprehensive. It's got your salts, your oils, your herbs, okay? 20 in all. And this is exactly what I use when I get my fissures or hemorrhoid issues. They've given you a coupon. You and I, a coupon, okay? Definitely go to Amazon and use it. Use it, use it. They are asking you to. Thank you so much for your support, everyone. And thank you so much for Revival XR. Check them out. I think it's gonna help you. And the thing about fissures is that they're a normal phenomenon. Everybody will get a fissure at some point in their life. And I mean it, everybody. They may not remember, okay? They may not ever admit to you that they've ever gotten a fissure, but come on, who has never had a hard, dehydrated, large poop before in their life? Who has never had diarrhea 10 times after they went to Mexico and they drank the water there, right? Or food poisoning, what have you? It's impossible to get through life without a cut on your butt. Because if you think about a cut in your arm, is there anybody that can get away without scrapes on their arms or their legs? No way. No way, Jose. Scrapes and cuts everywhere in your body are a normal part of life. So that leads to the next question then. Why the huge thing about anal fissures, right? I have a friend who's got cuts or you have them personally. Why is this such a huge issue? And the reason is this, because they just don't go away or they keep coming back. And it's not just that they're annoying, it's because they're painful. They cause swelling in your anus. They make you afraid to poop and then they make you afraid to eat or they make you avoid and change your diet completely to this lifeless cardboard box in water that you gotta drink, awful. And the thing here is this, cuts in our butt are the only thing that really bother us. If we get a cut in our arm or in our head or in our butt cheek, does it bother us? No, not at all. A lot of us don't even put any bandages on it. Somebody may offer you Neosporin 
or like some alcohol baited on. You're like, no, I don't need any of that. Just give me a dirty towel. I'll just wrap it around here or just leave it open to the air. It's gonna be fine. No, it's not gonna get infected. No, it doesn't hurt that bad. You know, it's like something we can just rub off and we're just like, yeah, I'm tough. I can do it. But an anal fissure? No, no. Everybody reverts back to being a two-year-old baby and we want to be cuddled, coddled by our mamas, right? Is that right? Or coddled by our babysitter, grandmother, whoever was taking care of you back in the day. And now this leads to the therapy that we currently use today. So you go to your doctor because you have this painful cut on your butt and you say to the doctor, your surgeon say, Dr. Smith, please help me. This cut in the anus is bleeding. It's really painful. What can you do for me? And the doctor examines you, does their whole thing, he or she. You just sit down together and the goal here, what's the goal? Heal the cut. Let's make that cut heal, go away, and voila. Your problems of your life are over, right? Or so you thought. Yeah, that's exactly right. You are being duped. I am sorry, but that is not the treatment. That is not the entire story. How do I know that? Well, have you heard of recurrent anal fissures? Have you heard of chronic anal fissures that refuse to heal? Why is it that healing that cut is so difficult and why do they keep coming back? You know, it's kind of a simple example of you have a pipe and you call a plumber out. It keeps leaking, keeps dripping. And the plumber puts on a little bit of paste or maybe puts a little piece of duct tape on it. Look, it's done dripping, it's sealed off. And the plumber leaves, but in two days, somebody flushes the toilet and oh my God, it's dripping again. The carpet is wet in the ground. So you call the plumber back. You go back to the doctor's office because the fissure's leaking again or bothering you. The plumber looks at it and says, yeah, let's just put some more paste on it. The doctor says, let's put some more cream on that. Or you haven't had enough fiber, have you? You probably screwed up probably once or twice. You know, maybe you traveled. Yeah, let's, let's patch that up, okay? And guess what happens naturally? the pipe is leaking again. So thinking about from the plumber example perspective, is that a suitable solution for it to keep coming back? Or do you need a long lasting solution? Cause plugging it up, the water must be a symptom. It's not the actual problem, right? The actual problem is a leaky pipe. It has a defect and it needs to be replaced. Now what about my leaky anus or my anus with pain and fissures? Does that mean I need to replace my anus? And of course not. No, that is not what I'm saying at all. And if I were to say this in a different way, the typical doctor or surgeon simply sees the fissure, the cut, as the only task to complete. Once it's healed, the job is over. You don't have to see me again, sir or ma'am. Your problems are done, you should be fissureless for life. I like you enough to hope I never see you again. But we know that fissures come back so easily. So then what is the issue here? Oh, and I'm not saying your doctor is incompetent or bad. This is standard of care. I'm trying to bring fissure care into the future. Thinking about things more deeply to get people longer lasting relief. And I'm sharing it with you here. So if I'm saying the fissure is the symptom, what is the core root of the problem? It is your anal sphincter muscles and your pelvic floor. And so that's why I am not a fan of the LIS or lateral internal sphincterotomy. I'm more of a fan of pelvic floor physical therapy. You have to teach those muscles to behave correctly. It's not enough to just treat a cut and make it go away temporarily. No, not at all. Okay, and we've already talked a lot about scar tissue and how much easier it is to break that stuff apart with when it's so fresh. The other thing is why I'm a fan of Botox rather than LIS and it's a very good treatment for anal spasm. But is it the normal Botox procedure? No, it's not. I have actually developed a new Botox procedure which is been very helpful for people with anal spasm. In fact, I'm using it routinely with people that are having hemorrhoid surgery. The most intense, painful experience. I am relieving a lot of that suffering with this Botox injection because I don't want people to have 
a terrible time with these really painful fissures that I created with surgery. You get my point here. And so if the muscles are very, very tight and they've learned to be tighter and tighter and forget how to relax, this is how the fissures keep coming back. When the poop is going through the anus and the anus muscles are just having a death grip on the poop as it's sliding out, you're gonna trash the very fragile hemorrhoids. They're gonna bleed. You're gonna get hemorrhoid issues. You're also gonna get rips in the inside lining and get recurrent anal fissures. You're gonna keep getting bleeding. And the problem is that the healing of the cut does not prevent more fissures from coming. That's not it. Because as you can see, when you heal the muscles and you teach them appropriately to relax again, that's when people are able to heal their fissures quickly, learn how to relax their muscles so that they don't have anal spasms. And therefore the fissure, the symptom, starts to disappear. Fissures no longer become scary to people because they know if they can get their habits back, get their poops softer, fix the mistake, relax their muscles again, put that pelvic floor therapy into control and relax their pelvic floor, they'll see those fissures heal extremely quickly and then they can get back to their life again. This video is not meant to be confusing, but I hope that it's brought some more understanding or an outside perspective into what you know about anal fissures and what your doctors have been telling you about anal fissures. And many of you may resonate with this talk because of the fact that your fissures do not seem to go away. And that's probably because it's not the core issue. The core issue with the muscles is still and always has been sitting there. If you got questions, definitely feel free to email me for a consultation or check out some other videos on anal fissures. And in the meantime, check out Amazon to check out this awesome sits bath supplement. It is Revival XR. And why I am such a fan of this is because of the fact that it's a comprehensive solution. I mean, we all love the one-stop shop, and this is it right here. It's got your Epsom salts, your Himalayan salts, your herbs, your oils, all organic and natural. And that's what brings the inflammation down without the use of medications, okay? Use this as an adjunct to keep your stool soft and also use it to soothe your muscles so that anal fissures can be much better in terms of healing and make them a thing of the past. Check them out. Thank you for the coupon. Use the coupon and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.